Hey guys, welcome to Breakthrough Time. I hope that you have been enjoying with your family, with your, with your friends, or whether you're alone, that you have been enjoying this time of worship. So I want to take this short time and just be able to speak to you on something that I believe is very important. And the topic is costly worship. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 24 verse 24 it says, Then the king said to Arauna, No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which costs me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. I want you to understand what is happening here. David wants to build an altar to the Lord and offer offerings on it. But he comes, he comes to Arauna and Arauna says, Hey, I'm going to give it to you for free. But we see that David responds and he says, Hey, I will not give anything to my Lord. I will give nothing to God, to my God, which has cost me nothing. Now that speaks a lot. Why? Because that land is you. You are that land. You are that oxen. You are that offering. Why? Because the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, it says present yourselves as living sacrifice, pure and holy and pleasant unto the Lord. So we see that the Bible says that we are that offering, that we are that sacrifice on the altar. But you see, many times we want to give God something that has cost us nothing. The Bible says that there were two brothers, Cain and Abel. Cain gave to God the leftovers, but Abel gave God the very best. So we see here that Abel's offering was received by the Lord, but we see that the offering of Cain was rejected by God. Why? Cain was not given to God something that was costly. What do I mean? You do not give to the king something that is not worth anything. You give to the king of kings the very best, that which has cost you something, that which has a price in it. So when you understand that your worship is not cheap, your worship is costly, your worship moves the heart of God, the Bible speaks of a woman that took the alabaster jar and broke it at the feet of Jesus. Now when we look at what was the cost of that alabaster jar, that alabaster jar was the cost, its full cost was that of the wage or the salary of someone for an entire year. Now how many of you would take your entire salary, not for a week, not for two weeks, not for a month, but for a year, and be able to just pour it out at the feet of Jesus. Let's just give it to the Lord. You see, that is what this woman did. This woman allowed her worship to be able to be poured out at the feet of Jesus. It was a costly worship. It was not a cheap worship. It was a costly worship. You see, many times we want to worship God only when it's good. When everything is going fine. When everything around us seems to be going our way. But when things are not going our way. Or when we see that there are problems or obstacles. Many times... That is when we choose to, to draw back. That is, that is when we don't want to pray, when we don't want to seek God, when we don't want to come before the throne of God. Why? Because we feel that we cannot worship. But you see, it is in that moment where you are given to the Lord the worship that costs you most. It is in the moment where you have no strength, in the moments where you feel that you cannot give another step, in the moments where you don't know what to do, 
when you worship in the middle of the storm, when you worship from the midst of your situation, that is where your worship is costly. You see, oil is not just made just like that. Oil, the olive has to be crushed and that is where pure oil comes out. You see the best wine, the grape has to go through the crushing in order to produce the very best wine. What am I saying is that in the process, in the moments where we cannot, in the testing, in the trials of life, it is there where the very best worship, where a costly worship is produced. In those moments where the distractions are coming, where the negative thoughts are coming, in those moments where the enemy is tempting you, and in the midst of that you choose to worship the Lord. Let me tell you, that worship will mark eternity. That worship will impact the heart of God. Why? It's not a cheap worship. It's an expensive worship. But probably you might say, Pastor, but what if everything is going good? Can I still give, give God a costly worship? Yes, you can. How? By giving the very best. By going above and beyond what you can do. You see, when you're able to despite anything, you're able to worship and give Him the very best. That worship is costly. And you see, the Bible says that the worship of this woman was poured at the feet of Jesus. This perfume, this fragrance. And we see that that fragrance moved the heart of God. You see, up to today, the worship of that woman is spoken about why. Her worship was not cheap. Her worship was expensive. Her worship filled the room. Her worship transformed the atmosphere. When you pour out a costly worship, there is something that happens despite the problems, despite the quarrels, despite anything. If you're able to worship in the midst of that, your worship is not cheap. Your worship is costly. But most importantly, will you give to God that which is valuable to you? When you lay it down at the feet of Jesus, that is also a way of cost of worship. When you live your life in a way that honors the Lord, in a way that brings glory to Jesus, that worship is impacted. That is a fragrance. That is a filling the atmosphere and transforming your surrounding. And let me tell you, you will see God glorified in your midst, in your home, in your surroundings, if you're able to offer to the Lord a costly worship. So today I want to challenge you with this. That like David, you would say, I will not give to my God anything that has cost me nothing. I will not give to my king anything that does not have a high price. Will you give the Lord a cost of worship? Today, I challenge you to be able to offer to the Lord a worship that will transform the atmosphere, that will transform your home, that will transform everywhere. Why? Because your worship will prepare the atmosphere for the glory of God to come and just move in a mighty way in your life. So today, right here where you are, raise your hands, close your eyes in worship. Pour out your worship. You see, it is a much more than a song. It is the attitude of your heart. Will you allow your heart to align to the heart of God and be able to Pour out a love song, a gratitude song, a song that will move the heart of the Father. So right here where you are, let's worship and let's give the Father a worship that costs us.